I was reading my email and I got a online uh, subscription from uh, the scientists uh, exploring life inspiring innovation it's an online uh, magazine I, I've worked in engineering so I, I like to keep up with uh, various items in, in the scientific world because a lot of people are quoting science today as a, as a matter of well this proves how our world is working and therefore we need to make these decisions based on all this actual evidence that we've compiled brought together and, and yet I, I keep reading various articles that talk about well this paper was uh, retracted because of this error or that paper was retracted because of that fraudulent that fraud and I in reading the the newspaper and watching uh, news on uh, the internet and stuff like that uh, I know that a lot of these big splashy papers that prove one thing or another especially if it's more politically correct than the other you know helps one side the right side or the left side that gets touted and it doesn't always get retracted it doesn't have the same impact and so in reading this article about factor fiction it talks about how this DNA contamination is um, questions uh, recent papers on food derivative uh, uh, nucleosides acids in human bloodstreams and it's like, oh, the professionals are calling into question the other professionals. And they've done this for hundreds and thousands of years. It's nothing new. But if somebody had made some great big political statement based on um, well, the evidence that one side gave, well, then that can affect us all. And, and there was a, a man, uh, Dr. David Page, head of the White Hands Head Institute at MIT, he said that th this has actually happened. He, he was doing a, a YouTube um, discussion on why sex matters, and that's the sex, you know, not the not the not the verb, not the activity. It's just that you're male or female, right? You know, what sex are you? Not whether you're having sex. It's why why your sex matters. And and he mentioned that because he had he had been part of the genome project, and everybody's talking about you know how we know all this about the DNA and he goes but you know there's some evidence you, you got to go watch it it's why sex matters he goes there's some evidence that you know one person gets and they misrepresent it to like a president and then the president states it and then everybody thinks it's okay go back and read his uh, watch his YouTube article for that and and that's what this is that's what this paper is saying well you know not everything that these guys said is right and I've, I've seen this working in the laboratory well when I was an undergrad I'm, I'm doing a co-op and all I gotta do is take some measurements right and, and I've been doing this for 15 years I know stuff right so I set up this test procedure got all my right equipment got it in line got it all set up and then the senior engineer comes in he says so what do you got Dale I, well you know I'm going to take these these measurements for uh, the current in this controllers circuit he goes oh he goes you know your meters wrong I'm like, what do you mean it's wrong he goes it's not sensitive enough I'm like oh but it's like plus or minus five percent and and, and uh, that's about what I'm doing he was yeah but and he went through the whole system because it's a system that builds up it's, it's it's like at the gas station when they say that you're you're spending so many dollars or cents per ounce right per gallon per ounce but if they cheat you on a half an ounce you, you you can't you you can't notice it you barely notice it 
on a machine if the machine is running. They can be cheating you on a half an ounce of gasoline. Two cents, right? Three cents, maybe. But over the course of a day, over the course of hundreds of gallons of gasoline, you know, they're, they're stealing a little bit from everybody simply because the meter on the gas pump is not accurate enough to catch it. But there's some people, I've seen this on YouTube too, where they, they turn off the pump, you know, they set it off to the side where it's not running, and you can still see the meter rolling up the money. It's just not sensitive enough. There's things that are wrong in how they're just measuring it. And that's what this article is about. They're, they're, they're measuring, how they're measuring and checking out the, the DNA and it, how the contamination is supposed to be working, affecting things. And it got me to thinking, are, are we dealing with science where I can run a, a set of given tests and repeat them and repeat them and repeat them and repeat them again and again and again and I always come out with the same thing are we really dealing with facts when they say they have science today how, how much facts are we really dealing with or is it skewed or is it contaminated or is it like the kids around in the circle it just gets modified. I mean, is it is it fact? Is it scientific fact? Or, or is it some fantasy, some fiction that fits with what everybody believes? I was reading the Bible this morning, and in Genesis it says, this is the history of the earth. It's like, oh, okay, that's a matter of faith. You read the Bible, you, know, you read it, like, okay. Genesis says one, two, and three, you know. That's the history of the earth, right? But that's by faith. And I know that's by faith. Science come along and say, we have these set of protocols. We follow all these procedures. Therefore, we can thoroughly demonstrate stuff. And we can repeat it. And it's always the same. Like if I pick up this screwdriver in here on earth and I let it go, it falls at 32 feet per second, right? Per second. Or 9.81 meters per second per second. The science. But after having worked in engineering for, you know, 20, 25 years, and, you know, things have got to be according to the laws of nature. <laughs> or they don't work. You know, people buy smartphones because they're obeying the laws of nature. But people are taking medicines and people are making it all sorts of decisions on other things that are supposedly scientific or they're told that they're scientific but in reality when when you look at it it's it's consensus oh yeah well we believe this we believe that well it's kind of close I, I watched a, uh, a YouTube video by um, oh what's this guy's name why people believe strange things. You can find them on YouTube. Why people believe... Michael Shermer. S-H-E-R-M-E-R. -E -E why people believe strange things. And he, and he goes through it. He's, he's uh, an atheist, I think. He talks about religion and shoots holes through... You know, it, it's, it's just a matter of faith. Or, or so he says, right? And some religious stuff he shoots holes through because it's not science, right? Fair enough. It's not science, it's faith. You can walk out on the lake as many times as you want. <laughs> You're going to sink. By faith, we know Jesus walked on the water more than once that's the historical record we accept by faith you know that's the difference between science and faith right but even in his thing his YouTube uh, talk he talks about uh, black holes and other anomalies 
And he says, well, the, the, the Christians, the theologians, they say, well, that happened. We can't explain it. It was God. He goes, we as scientists, we don't do that. We say, oh, this anomaly happened. This singularity happened. And we'll give it a place filler, a name. We'll call it a black hole. And then we'll study it to see exactly how and why. But then you have people that come by later, and they accept all of the place fillers and all of that as fact. And people know about this. Well, some people do. And so I was reading this article this morning. Hmm. Another paper that might disprove another paper, another paper that might need to be retracted. Because it gets down to whether you can really accurately run a test without contamination, without having other things affect it. And, and I've run, as an engineer, I've run those kind of tests. You have to have shielding so that the RF doesn't, radio frequencies don't affect it. you got to shield things from heat. There's all sorts of things that you have to shield from. And if they're running tests and it's contaminated, you know, it's like going to a restaurant and buying contaminated food. And the next day you go, oh man, I got the one day flu. No, you don't. <laughs> you have food poisoning. They gave you contaminated and or rotten food. <laughs> That's the fact. But, you know, we've got this urban legend of one day flus. <laughs> oh, we've got all sorts of urban legends. Some are called science and some are called religion. But that's what came to mind when I'm reading this article. We should at least get down to where we say, well, this is a matter of faith. This is a matter of you know, real provable, demonstrable science. And this is what you know we kind of think is happening. I mean, we should just be at least more honest with that. Although there are people who lose their jobs and their power and their position and all of that. Because there's people who don't know what they're talking about. And they're claiming to be experts. And they get grand titles. And even Dr. David Page, the head of the Whitehead Institute at MIT, who studied the genome, he, he went in and he says, we have a problem. You should, you should go watch his article. The study of disease is flawed. And I'm reading that. I'm listening to that. He goes in and he says, why it's flawed. And so the pills that you are taking haven't been run through all of the correct tests for you if you're a male or if you're a female is basically what he's saying. There's all sorts of flaws in their study of disease. There are also flaws in their medicine. Just like if you've studied various religions, you'll see, well, wait a minute, that's not what the Bible really says. Why are you saying that? Well, you know, one of our teachers, you know, 300 years ago, he thought it was a good idea. Well, did you go back to the book and check it out? You know, did you go back to the laboratory and run the experiment? Well, no. I've been caught there too, so we all we all get caught by that stuff. Sure don't want to make a life-changing decision based on that, though. Certainly don't want to take some medicine based on the fact that, well, you know, 80% of the men who take it, it works fine. Well, that's fine if you're a man, then you got an 80-20 chance. But if you're a woman and your body's running on estrogen <laughs> and not testosterone as a major hormone, that could be doing all sorts of crap to you. <laughs> and, and then the doctor you're talking to, he may not even know why. Just like the technician at the hardware store or at the computer store may not know why. I just interviewed at a place. It's opening up. I listened to the guy who's going to run it. Oh, yeah, we took a two-week test, two-week training program. Me and my uh, manager, new head lead guy, 
and we know all this stuff. And I'm like, oh boy, I hope the people that don't walk into your store represent or think you guys are experts if you've had two weeks of training. That brings me back to this engineering lab that I worked in where one of the one of the engineers says, you know, they're calling them engineers when they come out of school these days. Uh, I'm not so sure they really are. And then the one engineer said, I had to actually practice my profession for five years before they would call me an engineer. And the, the even older guy looked at him and says, I had to practice, I had to actually practice my profession for 10 years before they called me an engineer. Today we have degree inflation, title inflation. You can't blame the children anymore for not believing what people say simply because their title or, or whatever it is. And that's what reading this article got me to thinking about. <laughs> because I know enough, I don't know everything about, I don't know that much about DNA in that. But I know enough science, I know enough engineering to know what they mean when they're saying this, this, this stuff's contaminated. Or this stuff isn't quite right. That's, that's the wonderful thing about having actually worked in these fields that have some cross compatibility and I've listened to the older men and the older women and they'll hear something and they'll be like yeah right <laughs> I finally understand that boy we could we could have a whole course online wherever just so the young people 18 to 25 could just listen to some old guys and old women talk about well this is the reality of it a lot of it's just BS but hello you've reached Dale the message keeps their job keeps the money in now